Disney is set to shake up the streaming world when in late 2019 they will launch their very own streaming service reportedly referred to as Disney Play by the company's CEO Bob Iger. This name hasn't been officially announced or confirmed by the studio but for the sake of simplicity I'll be using it throughout the video. While we don't know the full details of Disney Play just yet, with 95 years worth of original output, numerous acquisitions and plenty of great movies and shows on the horizon, the possibilities are almost endless. The amount of back catalogue Disney have to pillage is insurmountable, including over 100 of their own animated films and 20 from Pixar, 300 live action Disney branded movies, 150 Disney Channel original movies, hundreds more movies under subsidiary labels such as Touchstone and Hollywood Pictures, the 20 pictures from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the 10 Star Wars movies, the 4 Indiana Jones movies, 7 Muppets movies and literally countless TV series for the Disney Channel, Disney XD and ABC, both animated and live action. Of course, Disney will also have access to numerous television and film titles from 20th Century Fox, which they could dump on the service too, given that the merger will likely be complete by the time Disney Play launches. It's previously been revealed that in its effort to rival Netflix, Disney will launch the service with a family-friendly offering of 500 movies, 7,000 episodes of television, and thousands of shorts, with a greater selection of content being offered over time. It would be almost impossible to speculate on exactly what will find a place on Disney Play and what won't. However, but given a majority of their back catalogue is currently readily available on home media or are regular staples on the Disney Channel, this isn't likely the most enticing thing for consumers. What is, however, is the significant amount of platform exclusive series and movies that will be produced as an incentive for audiences to sign up. With numerous reports and announcements trickling in over the last few months, we can piece together a decent preview of Disney Play's first batch of original content, giving us a good idea of how the streaming service will take place. Let's get into it. First up, let's take a look at the numerous original series Disney have prepped for the service. Perhaps the most talked about original series heading to the platform is the untitled live action Star Wars series. While not much is known about this one just yet, it's supposedly set three years after Return of the Jedi, is currently being developed by Iron Man director Jon Favreau, and is reportedly costing Disney $100 million for 10 episodes. It looks like we can expect an incredibly cinematic series from Disney, who obviously have no plans to cut corners for the streaming platform platform's original content. Star Wars Clone Wars will also be set for a 12 episode reboot following the show's sudden cancellation in 2013 after Disney's buyout of Lucasfilm. While the Clone Wars team were allowed to complete work on a small handful of unfinished episodes released as season 6 The Lost Episodes, the series' arc was never quite rounded out. While it's unknown how many series the Clone Wars revival will last, it will finally give showrunner Dave Filoni the chance to bring closure to the show and to its fans. A number of live action series from Marvel Studios are also reportedly being prepped which are set to focus on supporting characters from the Marvel Cinematic Universe who might not necessarily be able to carry their own theatrical features. The first two characters allegedly getting their own series are Loki and Scarlet Witch and it's said that both Tom Hiddleston and Elizabeth Olsen will reprise their roles from the movies. With Marvel Studios head honcho Kevin Feige supposedly overseeing production, these series will be deeply rooted in the continuity and canon of the MCU unlike the Marvel series produced by Marvel Entertainment for Netflix ABC, Hulu and Freefall, all of which are set to stay where they are instead of transitioning to Disney Play. While no budget has been revealed for the Marvel shows, as the MCU is Disney's most lucrative brand, one would imagine that the series would have a similar budget to the Star Wars series, if not higher. A Monsters Inc. series has also been officially announced. The series will of course be animated, but it's unknown whether it will be in the same computer animated style as the movies, or if it will be like Tangled the series and be produced in a traditional style. Being pegged as a spin-off, it's also unknown if the series will be a prequel or sequel to the original movie, or if it will see the return of voice artists Billy Crystal and John Goodman, if the show focuses on Mike and Sully at all. Also, there has been no mention of Pixar's involvement with the show, meaning that this could mark the first time Disney have taken full control of a production based on a Pixar property since the Buzz Lightyear of Star Command series in the early 2000s. A series based on the popular Disney Channel High School Musical films is also in the works, reportedly titled High School Musical The Musical. The show will supposedly take on the style of a mockumentary series and focus on a group of students staging a theatre production of High School Musical. 
The show will initially run for 10 episodes, and each episode will feature a new rendition of a classic song from the High School Musical movies, as well as an original song. This one does sound a little bit weird to me, but I'm sure it will please fans of the movies. It is unknown if this series will be produced in place of the previously announced High School Musical 4, or if that will still go ahead for the Disney Channel. Another Muppets reboot is also said to be in the works. Of course, Disney produced a number of highly successful Muppet movies in the early 1990s, and though the relevancy of the characters faded over time, Disney purchased the property from the Jim Henson Company in 2004. While their 2011 film reboot The Muppets was a critical and commercial success, the 2014 follow-up movie The Muppets Most Wanted and 2016 ABC series weren't as well received. However, Disney do seem adamant to make the Muppet property relevant once again, continuing in their efforts to bring Kermit and co back into the pop culture zeitgeist. While as a lifelong Muppets fan, I'm excited to see what they do with this new series, I kind of fear that Disney may be flogging a dead horse with this one. Classic 90s Disney film trilogy The Mighty Ducks, following a team of young hockey players, is also said to be receiving a series adaptation. It's unknown if this will be a reboot of the original movies or some kind of spin-off or follow-up, however Stephen Brill and Jordan Kerner, the screenwriter and producer of the original trilogy, are reported to be attached. And perhaps the most obscure yet welcome original series is a reboot or reimagining of Disney's 2000 touchstone classic High Fidelity. The series is set for 10 episodes and will star Zoe Kravitz as a gender swapped version of John Cusack's character from the original movie, a record store owner obsessed with music, pop culture and making top 5 lists who breaks the fourth wall to recount a failed love life. High Fidelity will be written by Veronica West and Sarah Kukasurka, the writing duo from Bull and Ugly Betty, and among others will be produced by Scott Rosenberg, one of the screenwriters of the film. Though a pretty surprising choice, I'm actually really looking forward to this one. I adore the original movie and definitely think the story could work in the format of a rom-com series. Of course, Disney Play wouldn't be complete without a handful of original movies too, and the lineup sounds pretty spectacular so far. Possibly the most exciting movie heading to the service as an exclusive is a live-action adaptation of Walt Disney's 1955 classic Lady and the Tramp, which is reportedly one of Disney's highest priorities for the service's launch. My guess is that this will be similar to Disney's Jungle Book and upcoming Lion King adaptations in that it will use a combination of live action humans and CGI animals. The film is set to star Tessa Thompson and Justin Thoreau as Lady and the Tramp respectively and Kiersey Clemens and Thomas Mann as Darling and Jim Deer, while Lego Ninjago movie director Charlie Bean will helm the production. The Sword in the Stone is another Disney animation set to get a live-action adaptation on the small screen. The movie will be directed by 28 weeks later director Juan Carlos Fresnadillo, who will follow a screenplay penned by Game of Thrones screenwriter and producer Brian Cogman. The movie will shoot in Belfast, Northern Ireland, however no cast has yet been announced. It's very interesting to see such large productions like these two head to streaming instead of being released theatrically, but with Disney wanting to duplicate their big screen success at home, it's also a smart move to continue their animation to live action output on Disney Play. It also strikes me that Lady and the Tramp and Sword in the Stone aren't as high profile titles as other productions like Beauty and the Beast or even Christopher Robin and may even be better received by audiences on a smaller scale. Let's just hope quality isn't sacrificed for these two pictures. And it seems that absolutely no Disney property is safe from being rebooted these days, with even a number of the studio's beloved live action titles set for remakes, such as The Parent Trap and Honey I Shrunk the Kids, as well as Touchstone Features, Father of the Bride and Three Men and a Baby. No creative or performance talent has yet been announced for any of these projects. Each and every one of these properties are personal favourites and certainly piqued my interest, though they do kind of seem like strange choices to me, as each of these films have already received sequels, or spin-off series, or remakes, or are remakes themselves. I am simply left hoping that Disney do give these projects good production values and make them feel somewhat cinematic, unlike their fairly average low-budget Disney Channel original movies. I'm crossing my fingers that these are given better treatment than the recent Disney Channel remakes of Freaky Friday and Adventures in Babysitting. Luckily, Disney Play will also offer a handful of content based on original ideas and new acquisitions. Two projects originally set for theatrical 
release will instead head to Disney Play. A movie following a group of rookie magicians called Magic Camp, which will be based on a story by comedian Steve Martin, directed by the Freaky Friday 2003 director Mark Waters, and starring Adam Devine, Jeffrey Tambor, and Gillian Jacobs. As well as Christmas comedy Noel, which follows Santa's daughter Noel Claus, which will be written and directed by Miss Congeniality director Mark Lawrence, and star Anna Kendrick, Bill Hader, Billy Eichner, Shirley MacLaine, and Michael Gross. These two movies have already been filmed, and it's likely that they've both been completed and are sitting in the Disney vault somewhere waiting to be released. Sports drama Togo, starring Willem Dafoe, and based on the sled dog who led the 1925 Serum Run Relay, will also find its release on Disney Play. This one sounds interesting and hopefully up to the same quality as Disney's past true story sports films. And finally, Disney will also produce a number of movies based on acquired novels for the service, including adaptations of Kate DiCamillo's Flora and Ulysses, Jerry Spinelli's Star Girl, Stephen Pastis's Timmy Failure, and an adaptation of classic Spanish literary work Don Quixote, which is reported to be undergoing development as a madcap fantastical adventure in the same nature as the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Quixote has had a long troubled history at Disney, with at least three other attempts to adapt the story as an animated film dating back to the 1940s. It will be interesting to see how Disney finally pull this off as a live action film and makes me wonder how long it'll be until we see Disney producing exclusive animated feature content for the service. With all that said, Disney Play, if that's even what it's going to be called in the end, looks to be an incredibly ambitious and exciting venture for the Walt Disney Company and as a fan of the studio's lifetime output, I'm certainly looking forward to checking out all this original content as well as continuing to discover what's next on the horizon for the service. And at that guys, it is over to you. How do you feel about Disney Play and its numerous original productions? What are you most or least excited about? And will you be signing up to the service when it launches or be avoiding it like the plague? Fire away in the comments below and let me know your thoughts. If this is your first time viewing one of my videos, you like what you've seen, you'd like to see more like this in the future, then please don't forget to hit that big old subscribe button up on your screen right now, and also hit that like button down below if you're feeling extra generous. Also, don't forget to check out my many social media accounts, and please consider supporting me over on Patreon. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you have a wonderful day.